Hello children, in this video we will solve questions that were asked in the International Max Olympia 2017 from the Mathematical Reasoning section for Standard 6. Let's look at the questions. The first question is there on your screen. Find the estimated difference between 16,928 and 8,952 by rounding off each number to the nearest 100. In the question, they have asked us to find out the estimated difference by rounding off each number to the nearest 100. So, how will you round off 16,928 to the nearest 100? It can be rounded off as 16,900. Similarly, 8,952. How can you round it off to the nearest 100? It can be rounded off as 9. What is the estimated difference that we are looking for? 16,900 minus 9,000. And what will that be? The answer will be 7,900. That is the answer that we are looking for. The correct answer option is option A. Which of the following statements is correct? The product of two negative integers is always less than both the integers. The additive inverse of a negative number is negative. Multiplicative inverse of 5 is 1 by 5. What are we supposed to find out here? We have to find out which of the following statements is correct. The first statement says the product of two negative numbers is always less than both the integers. So, let us consider two negative numbers. Let us take two numbers minus 3 and minus 2. I have two negative numbers. Now, what is the product of these two negative numbers? Minus 3 multiplied by minus 2 which is equal to 6. So, here the product of these two negative numbers is actually greater than both the negative numbers. 6 is greater than minus 3 and minus 2. So, the first statement is wrong. It is not true. The first statement is not correct that the product of two negative numbers is always less than both the integers. See the product of two negative numbers will always be a positive number. So, it has to be greater than the given negative integers. So, the first answer option is wrong. Let us look at the second answer option. The additive inverse of a negative number is negative. So, this is also wrong because the additive inverse of a negative integer is always positive. So, the second statement is also wrong. The third statement says multiplicative inverse of 5 is 1 by 5. Yes, that is correct. Multiplicative inverse of 5 is 1 by 5. So, your correct answer here is option C. Study the given figures carefully. Which of the above figures are polygon? Which of the above figures are polygon? Figure 1 and figure 3. Both of these are polygons. Figure 2 is not a polygon. Why? Because it has one curved side. So, this is not a polygon. It has a curved line basically. So, this is not a polygon. Uh, the correct answer here will be 1 and 3. Both are polygons. That is the correct answer is option C. Both 1 and 3 are polygons. If A, B, C, D and P, Q, R, S are two identical squares, then find the area of the shaded region. How will you approach this question? First, let us find out what is the area of the square A, B, C, D. What is the area of square A, B, C, D? It is nothing but 10 squared which is equal to 100 centimeter squared. Similarly, what is the area of square P, Q, R, S? That is also again 10 squared which is equal to 100 centimeter squared. Now, you have to find out the area of this shaded region and this shaded region. So, first let us find out what is the area of this shaded region 1. Let us call it as shaded region 1. What is the area of this shaded region? That is nothing but the area of shaded region 1 is nothing but the area of the square A, B, C, D minus the area of this small rectangle here. What is the area of this small rectangle? I know the breadth of this rectangle is 1.5 centimeters and what will be the length of that rectangle? The length of the rectangle will be, I know this full length is 10 centimeter. 
so this length is 8 cm or this length will be 2 cm so if i consider the small rectangle if i consider the rectangle p m l d the area of that small rectangle is nothing but 2 multiplied by 1.5 which is equal to 3 cm square so area of the region 1 is nothing but this 100 cm squared minus 3 cm squared that is 97 cm squared i hope it's clear total uh, area of the square a b c d is 100 cm squared from that i am removing the area of this shaded region so i will get the area of the region 1 that i am looking for which is equal to 97 cm squared similarly when i am considering the region 2 let this be the region 2 the region 2 shaded region which i have to find out the area again what will be the area of that same thing you have to do find out the area of uh, square pqrs which is equal to 100 and subtract 3 from that that is again i am subtracting the area of this region from that the answer that i get will again be equal to 97 centimeter square so what will be the total area of the shaded region that i am looking for it will be 97 plus 97 which is equal to 194 centimeter square the correct answer here is option c so the way you approach these questions is very important see do not uh, sit and write uh, a, a, like steps like uh, pq is equal to pl plus lq and all that might be in the normal school examinations yes definitely you have to write these steps it's very very important but when it comes to olympiad examinations the way in which you approach the question is very very important you will have to solve the questions using easy methods like this so that you are able to arrive at the answer faster and steps are not important here the idea is to solve the questions as fast as possible and move on to the next question find the measure of the smaller angle formed by the hour and the minute hands of a clock at 10 o'clock what is the uh, total angle in a clock the total angle in a clock is 360 because the clock is like a circle and the total angle that is covered in a clock is 360 degree angle contained in a circle is 360 degree all of us know that now how is the clock split the clock actually is divided into 12 equal parts correct that is the spacing between all the numbers in the clock 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that is the spacing between all the numbers in the clock is equal or i can say that this 360 degrees of the circle is divided between these 12 points equally in the clock or what is the angle that is there between between two consecutive numbers in a clock that is nothing but 360 divided by 12 see what i am trying to say is this uh, this spacing between 12 and 1 is same as the spacing between 1 and 2 the spacing between 1 and 2 is same as the spacing between 2 and 3 so likewise if you see the full clock span is the full clock the angle in the full clock is 360 degree and this 360 degree is divided equally among 12 points or what is the angle between each point that is nothing but 360 divided by 12 which is equal to 30 degrees now when the time is 10 o'clock what will be the angle between 10 and 12 see 10 is one point then you have 11 and then you have 12 so basically this is 30 degree this angle between 10 and 11 is 30 degree right we know that we just discussed that this is 30 degree this is another 30 degree so the angle between 10 and 12 will be what 30 plus 30 which is equal to 60 degree so the answer that we are looking for is 30 plus 30 which is equal to 60 degree the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand of the clock at 10 o'clock is 60 degree that is option a a triangular prism has dash faces, dash vertices and dash edges. This is how a triangular prism will look. How many faces does the triangular prism have? It will have 5 faces and uh, how many vertices will it have? It will have, this is one vertice, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It will have 6 vertices and how many edges? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 9 edges. You can just count, you can just draw a triangular prism and check. It will have 5 faces, 6 vertices and 9 edges. And what is your correct answer here? Your correct answer here is option D. Select the correct match. 
12 and 39,000. See, 12 and 39,000. Thousandth. It's not thousands. It's thousandth. Uh, how will you do that? It is nothing but 12 plus 39 divided by 1000, which is equal to 12.039. But what is given here? It is 12.420. No, that's not the that's not a correct match. Here I have 4 plus 40 hundredth. So see, re read it clearly. It is not thousands. It was thousandth. So similarly here 4 plus 40 hundredth, which will be 4 plus 40 divided by 100, which will be 4.4. 4. Again here what is it I have? I have 4.004, which is wrong. Similarly here it is nothing but here it is 16 plus 2 tenth that is 2 tenth is nothing but 2 by 10 here 40 hundredths is nothing but 40 by 100 9 thousandths is nothing but 9 by 1000 so 16 plus 2 by 10 which is equal to 16.2 yes this is correct here you have 8 and 5 hundredth so this will be 8 plus 5 by 100 which is equal to 8.05 this is also wrong your correct answer option is option C. Study the given figure carefully. If DOB is a straight line, then match the column. Okay, DOB, this is a straight line means this full angle is equal to 180 degrees. Now, what is angle AOB? You have to match that first. Where is angle AOB? Uh, angle AOB is here. What is this angle? Okay. Uh, here you know this is 90 degree okay so definitely angle AOB is going to be less than 90 degree see you know angle AOE this big angle here right angle AOE is 90 degree so angle AOB is going to be definitely less than 90 degree or I can say angle AOB will be an acute angle so angle AOB has to be an acute angle next angle AOE where is angle AOE AOE I already know very clearly here they have given it's a right angle that is 90 degrees the right angle means 90 degree angle measure is 90 degree then you have angle AOC which is AOC this is angle AOC now when you talk about angle AOC it is bigger than angle AOE so definitely angle AOC is going to be an obtuse angle and angle BOD they have given in the question right DOB is a straight line if it's a straight line then it means the angle is 180 degree the angle is called a straight angle so angle BOD will be a straight angle now just check with the options which will be the correct option A2 uh, A2 is there in option B and option C and then you have uh, B3 B3 is there only in option C so your correct answer option here has to be option C here it is given B1 which is wrong so option C is your correct answer option which of the following number lines correctly represent minus 5 plus 8 see to solve this question you just have to check with the options you have to find out which of the following number line represents minus 5 plus 8 very clearly if you look at option D see 0 to minus 5 so this represents minus 5 and here I have minus 5 to plus 3 or what is uh, what uh, uh, from minus 5 to 3 it is 8 correct there are 8 points so minus 5 plus 8 is what is represented by this number line and the answer finally is 3 correct see what is minus 5 plus 8 minus 5 plus 8 is nothing but 8 minus 5 literally or that is equal to 3 so here what are we doing we are going from 0 to minus 5 and then from here we are adding 8 and we get the answer as 3 so your correct answer option here is option D. Here just by looking at the figure you are able to find out which is the correct answer option. Option D is our answer.